Perry Ray. This is Socially Speaking. I just want to take a minute to share with you our commentary from the other side of the tracks. Hi, I'm Perry Ray. I'm a longtime activist whose focus has been on anti-racism issues. The hope is that America will one day become a society where color isn't the determinate factor on where you live, the type of job you get, or the type of health care you might or might not get from a doctor. Lately, or at late, we've been faced with the dilemma of Virginia Governor Ralph Northam. Ralph Northam was elected just two years ago. And Ralph Northam was elected because black people believed he was the best candidate for the job. And in theory, he was. But unfortunately, it had been revealed that he had some skeletons in his closet. And that closet included Ralph Northam acting like a racist. Now, what's so bad about acting like a racist? And I hear the question, that was long ago. He's a changed man, and that's his claim. Here's the problem. When a person is a racist. The problem is they will govern with a bias that is internalized. It may not be something you see, but it is something that affects the lives of the people who are the constituents of that person in service. Some folks don't even understand what the issue is or what the problem is. And in America, race is a determinate factor in where you stand in the hierarchy of this country. It is highly unfortunate that power and control in this country has come from the Atlantic slave trade, historically, and it worked its way all the way up through what we know as emancipation, then the Civil Rights Movement, well, Jim Crow, and then the Civil Rights Movement, and now we have an imbalance and a, uh, a vengeance of sorts of those who enjoyed having power and control over people of color, black folks in particular. Our so-called President Donald Trump has reinforced that vengeance that desire to come back and have things the way it used to be in the 1860s, pretty much. Well, Ralph Northam is guilty of being a racist in that he was one of those covert racists, which are more dangerous than the racists that you see, the one that's loud and out, or David Duke, or, or someone who says, for certain, that I am more superior than you. Unfortunately, in America, many don't believe in the words that were written in the Constitution, nor the preamble of this Constitution. We, the people of these United States of America, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice and ensure domestic tranquility. Ensure domestic tranquility. There shall be no tranquility when someone, a white male in particular, is calling me nigger or saying that he is superior to me. Now, I've in my lifetime had many white males act just that way. And, unfortunately for me, I've been resistant to it. But it was the right thing to do at the right time in history, and I'll do it until the day that I die. Now, What's the deal with Ralph Northam? Dressing in blackface, blacking his face. <laughs> One, he's an idiot. But besides him being an idiot, he's governing over people in Virginia and 
some of those folks are black folks that he's governing over. Some of those people are black people. And, and here's the big problem. That when they need housing enforcement, he's responsible for that. When they need employment enforcement, being racially discriminated against, he's responsible for that. And if he don't like you as a Negro, then guess what? You got nothing coming. That's why you can't hire racist judges or appoint racist judges. That's the reason why you can't vote for those who have racist past. Believe you me, they say that it's hard to teach an old dog a new trick. Getting rid of racism is a, an old trick. It's a habit. It's, an, it's, it's something that is it, it, it's indwelled in a person from those who they see as teachers, those whom they entrust. So blackface, him dancing Michael Jackson, and now it's revealed that his Secretary of State, Mark Herring, also did that back in the 80s. Now, it would be a problem, wouldn't be a problem, if everybody in America did it. But that's not the case. You see, minstrelsy, or the minstrel show, was an American form of entertainment developed in the early 19th century. And each show consisted of a comic, uh, a comic skit, variety acts, dancing, and, and music performances that depicted people <laughs> of color, especially black people, people of African descent. descent. Shows were performed by white people in makeup or blackface for the purpose of playing the role of a black person, mocking a black person. In, in doing so, it made white, white, white people feel better about themselves, made them feel superior to blacks, which media, it, media infects people where they go out and they act on the thing that they see. Human beings are visual creatures. And, and I'm not talking about blind folks. Uh, but there are some black performers and all black men groups that performed as well. Uh, but these minstrel shows lampooned black folks, depicted them as dim-witted, lazy, lazy, buffoonish, superstitious, and in sometimes, some ways, happy-go-lucky. Well, not all black folks are that way. I've met many white folks who are like that. The chief purpose of blackface was to build a mental image of the inferior black man so that white people would all be on the same, same page, that they were superior. So here we are with me trying to explain this to some of my white friends, some of our followers on Twitter and Facebook. What's the problem? with dressing up like Michael Jackson. And strangely enough, Ralph Northam picked the whitest black person he could find. Michael Jackson was, was, was recreating his face and his, bleaching his skin. So it appeared that he had become white on us. But until he got prosecuted, he realized that he was black and what nothing skin bleaching could do about it. This incident brought to my memory the book that our content producer, Barbara Patterson, bought for me and gave to me as a gift, Lies Across America, by Professor James Lowen, one of the most brilliant minds I've ever, ever had the pleasure to study under. And in his book, Lies Across America, there's a chapter, 90, on shards of minstrelsy on a far north campus. And he tells a story about an endowment or a gift given by a disbursement committee at the uh, University of Burlington. And this plaque sits up on the wall of uh, this building, the Bailey Howe Library. And it says Cakewalk Disbursement Committee 1964 and Cakewalk Disbursement Committee 1965. Cake spelled K-A-K-E. K-A-K-E. Cakewalk. Now, he goes on to say for 80 years, Cakewalk was the most important student tradition on campus. A contest 
hitting pairs of male dancers, one from each fraternity. The men performed a difficult routine involving elements of gymnastics, calisthenics, and dance, usually with arms linked to the ragtime tune, Cotton Babes. Although almost everyone at the college was white, the students performed in blackface and wearing black kinky wigs. This bizarre competition was a centerpiece of the university's winter carnival from at least 1893 to 1969. Cakewalk was a part of, and is a part of some fraternities tradition. A tradition that came long before the millennials, long before young folks, long before those folks my age, baby boomers. Racism existed long before them. Cakewalk was a means through the academic institution to reinforce white superiority and racism. That's the problem with Ralph Northam and Mark Herring, that these people have purview over the state of Virginians' lives. There are many other races in the game too. I hope that this episode will cleanse Virginia of some of those racists, and that we vet those who run for office and those whom we vote for. The Other Side. And that was a socially speaking commentary by Perry Red from The Other Side of the Track. The Other Side. The Other Side of the Track. Red Media.